Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Our Lady of Grace on our first LGBT Pride Mass. And we welcome any of those who are also marching in the parade. We'll do a special blessing uh, at the end of Mass for you. And since some of you are visitors, just to mention that the restrooms are past the organ console to your right. And also, you'll notice there's a platform. So when you exit the bench, please watch your step so you don't trip or fall. And uh, so join us in, in the songs and prayers. I hope you have a hymnal. Uh, we say a special peace prayer uh, at the end of the prayer of the faithful. If you don't have a hymnal, they're on the tables here or on the back as well. Thank you. Good morning. Today is the Nativity of St. John the Baptist. Today the second collection is for fuel collection debt reduction. Kindly remember in your prayers the parishioners of Our Lady of Grace and St. Joseph Parishes for whom this Mass is being offered. Our presider today is Father Alex. Let us begin our celebration by singing the entrance hymn number 686, Sing a New Song, number 686.
John the Baptist, called the people to a baptism of repentance. The herald's cry echoes down the ages in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the hope of Israel. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are God's anointed one. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God who raised up John the Baptist to make ready a nation for fit for Christ the Lord, give your people the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all into the way of salvation and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O coastlands. Listen, listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth. From my mother's womb, he gave me my name. He made me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel through whom I shall show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing, uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken, who formed me in his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, 
to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make I will make you a light to the nations that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join us in singing our sponsorial song. I praise you for I am wonderfully made. from the Act of the Apostles. In those days, Paul said, God raised up David as their king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will, he will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to fa unfasten the sandals of his feet. My brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this world of salvation has been sent. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Lord be with you. Listen to the gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name, and all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the third church for our historic parish, founded in 1851. And it certainly is the grandest. It was opened in 1878. And with the Irish immigration swelling in the mid-19th century, 20 years after the parish was founded, the pastor realized that we need a church this size to accommodate all the new immigrants and parishioners. And so let's do some math for a moment. This church back then seated 1,400 people. And the records reveal that every Mass, every Sunday, it was packed. In fact, at some Masses, there was standing room only. So let's say from 1878 to today, 140 years. Let's say there were five masses on most Sundays before the 1970s. So you figured 7,000 people came into this church every Sunday. So let's just pick a figure. Of all those years, people who came at least once, there may have been 100,000 parishioners who came to Our Lady of Grace Church. And let's say among the 100,000, 7,000 who sat in these benches as we are this morning knew that there was something different about the way they felt, but they could never speak it. They had to hide who they were, because if they spoke it, they knew that they would be rejected and ostracized and even kicked out of their own homes. They could not, like Zechariah, unable to speak until he knew the truth. They could not say the word homosexual. They could be fired from their jobs. They could be beaten up. And worst of all, they would be sitting in a church and hear that they're going to hell and that they are sinners. Imagine 7,000 people living a life of fear because the church and society rejected them. And I'd like now for you to repeat after me, because I would like to say, we are sorry. And I'd like Gary to come forward and to light a candle in memory of all those gay and lesbian parishioners who never knew that they were accepted by God and loved by God and welcomed by God.
The readings today couldn't have been more appropriate for our first annual Gay Pride Mass because we are living in interesting times. If we look at the history of the church, that there is an official teaching church which still doesn't quite understand how we have to move forward. But there are the people of God who understand that we are all created, as we heard in today's first reading from Isaiah, that we are all born and we know that from birth we were given our name. From birth we are dedicated to God because God created all of us. And so as we reflect on that, we now have a Pope whose five words indicated that we have to look at how we welcome our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters. Who am I to judge, he said. And then we're blessed with Cardinal Tobin, our Archbishop, who a little over a year ago, through the efforts of David Harvey, who is here today, welcomed our lesbian and gay brothers and sisters and transgendered into the cathedral to celebrate for the first time a pilgrimage mass. These are important historic moments for us. But I think what Pope Francis invites us to do is to look at that gap that's there between what it is as a church and how the people of God want us to move forward. Now, today, many of you will march in the parade, which is 49 years old. And that parade is significant because it has marked the changes in the LGBT community from newfound freedom to ministering to those individuals afflicted by HIV and AIDS to equality in marriage and in unions. And through these decades, we understand how God calls us to always look at how we're all part of God's family. And so as we move forward, it's important for us to reconcile the differences that exist. Now you might know that Pope Francis is going to Ireland in a few weeks for what's called the World Meeting of Families. The last time is when he came to the United States and he met in Philadelphia. Well, for the first time, one of the documents that was issued by the Vatican uses the initials LBTQ. Now, some of us might say, well, what does that really mean? Because in society, we're so far advanced. But I think as the church inches forward, we have to celebrate any steps that include people rather than exclude them. And what is also driving the church's concern is that the millennial generation rejects injustice and they see the church's teaching toward LGBTQ as being antiquated. And they know that. Now here in Hoboken, half our 55,000 population are between the ages of 20 and 34, half of that population. So we are a millennial city in so many ways. So the church needs to acknowledge that since Stonewall in 1969, that we as an American community and now a world community see that God's people are, as we sang in the Psalm today, wonderfully made, that we are a reflection of who God is, the diversity of all of us. And certainly that will be seen later on in the parade, the diversity of all God's people. But Pope Francis is a lot like John the Baptist in today's gospel, <coughs> because he heralds a new way of being church. The first pope from South America really is challenging our church to realize that if we focus on moral issues that divide us, we never become what Jesus envisioned us to be, one family, one people of God. And so as we are trying to understand that, the church has to move in a new direction. 
First, we need to understand that one's orientation is a given. It's not a choice. What's given and what's possible are two different things. And so suppressing one's orientation is not healthy or good. But somehow our theology has to catch up with where the world is. So we need to understand what it means to be a member of the LGBTQ and how that impacts on our church and our world in a positive way. But we also need to understand that as we move forward, certain practices have to end. We hear sad stories of individuals who are teaching or working in Catholic institutions. And once it's found out that they, either they married civilly or they are in a union, they can be fired. That's unjust and it has to end. And finally, what we also need to reconcile is that more than a hundred years after Sigmund Freud identified the personality of an individual, the psychology of an individual, we have to realize that our actions are not isolated. For so long, our church looked at what people did rather than who people are. And once we can make these changes, I think we're moving in the direction that will make us more inclusive, but also will help us to live what we hear in today's readings. For if God ordained us from birth, then we are all made in the image and likeness of God. And what our world is recognizing, what our church needs also to recognize, is that diversity is what makes us special. And God ordained it, and we celebrate it. And so later on at the end of Mass, I'll ask those of you who'd like a special blessing because you're walking in today's parade to stand. Because that powerful message of being public about the beauty of LGBT life is something we need to celebrate, not only in Manhattan and all the capitals of the world that will celebrate it today, but also in our churches. For those 7,000 Our Lady of Grace parishioners who were afraid to speak the truth, now may they be at peace and may anyone who comes to Our Lady of Grace now and in the future always realize that as part of God's creation, each of us is wonderfully made. Together now, we profess our faith as we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified unto Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God sees into our hearts and knows what we need. 
Let us humbly offer our petitions. That all baptized heed the gospel call to turn from sin and change their lives, so let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That national and local representatives root out unjust labor practices, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That print and broadcast journalists seek truth and disseminate it responsibly, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That children in the womb grow in health and safety and leap for joy with John the Baptist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. That all who gather at this Eucharistic feast be reconciled with one another in God's boundless peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our leaders, that they implement policies that allow safe migration, just migration, just migrant working conditions and an end to the detention of asylum seekers and the reunification with their children while, protect, while protecting our national safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For an end of violence and poverty which displaces so many people from their homes and homelands, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Those who have, for those who have died especially, Monsignor Will, William Linder, Albert R. Rhea, Philip C. F. Schiller, Army, Abraham Tarot, Army, Tanner Stone Higgins, Army, Aaron M. Faust, Marine, David P. Norzik, Army, Michael C. Braden, Army, Nicholas S. Johnson, Army, Dean R. Schaefer, Army, Don C. Vare, Army, Chris J. Workman, Army. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord, our Lord. prayer. If you please open the inside front cover of the hymnal, and together we'll pray the peace prayer. St. Joseph, a man of peace and wisdom, teach us the way of peace. Protect us from the hatred and the evil that breed terrorism and justify it. Heal the brokenness that remains in many hearts. Release us from the bondage of fear and distrust of neighbor, especially the neighbor who is a stranger in our midst. Gentle Saint Joseph, help us to be strong in defense of justice and care for the poor. Help our church to be a prophetic leader in the struggle for world peace. Help, help our parishioners to be generous and constant in praying for this peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Before the collection, Cardinal Tobin has asked all the parishes to read this statement at all our masses. It's regarding the Archdiocese of New York's announcement of a credible and substantial allegation of the abuse of a minor by Cardinal Theodore McCarrick. I recognize that the people of our archdiocese meet the announcement by the Archdiocese of New York's credible and substantiated claim of abuse of a minor by Cardinal McCarrick with a range of emotions. I am thinking particularly of those who have experienced the trauma of sexual abuse by clergy whose lives have been impacted tragically by abuse. To these survivors, their families and loved ones, I offer my sincere apologies and my commitment of prayer and action to support you in your healing. The Archdiocese of Newark has never received an accusation that Cardinal McCarrick abused a minor in the past. These have been allegations that he engaged in sexual behavior with adults. The Archdiocese and the Diocese of Metuchen received three allegations of sexual misconduct with adults decades ago. Two of these allegations resulted in settlements. Cardinal McCarrick served this Archdiocese for almost 15 years. No doubt many of you developed strong relationships with him and appreciate the impact of his service. Those feelings are likely hard to reconcile with the news of a credible and substantiated claim of abuse of a minor. While Cardinal McCarrick maintains his innocence and the canonical process continues, we must 
first put the, the serious matter with respect and support for the process aimed at hearing victims and finding truth. The above crisis in our church has been devastating. We cannot undo the actions of the past, but we must continue to act with vigilance today. I renew my commitment to seek forgiveness and healing while ensuring a safe environment for children in this archdiocese. I will continue to report immediately to civil authorities any accusation of sexual abuse of a minor by clergy and will cooperate fully in the investigation and adjudication. I continue to urge anyone who was abused by clergy to come forward, as have brave survivors before you. To the priests, religious, and all members of this community, I join you in continued prayer that God carry us together in love with commitment to our faith and each other. As our gifts are offered and prepared, please join us in singing the offertory hymn number 733, How Can I Keep From Singing, number 733. Pray that our sacrifice, these gifts, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this holy church. We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, in celebration of the Nativity of John, told of the world Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In John the Baptist, we praise your great glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born. His birth brought great rejoicing, and his coming human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed to the Lamb of Redemption. And so, to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism, 
and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so, with angels and saints, together now we sing. we pray by sending down your spirit upon them so they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured forth for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread of life, when we drink from this holy cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, till you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Giving thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all God's people. Remember all the gay and lesbian parishioners who've gone before us, and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep. Welcome them, have mercy on us, we pray, with Mary, the apostles and saints, that we inherit eternal life through Jesus Christ. Through, with, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Forever and ever. Forever. Alleluia. Forever and ever. In a spirit of unity, I invite you to join hands with each other. And together now, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be here. As we receive the body and blood of Christ, let us sing the communion hymn number 754, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, number 754.
Let us pray. Having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly Lamb, O Lord, may we find joy in the nativity of John the Baptist. Your church will know the author of rebirth in Christ whose coming John foretold forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. I am happy that our councilman, Michael DeFusco, is with us this morning. I'd like him to come forward to say a few words. Councilman? Good morning, everybody. Today is such a joyous day, a beautiful day. And in the words of Father Santoro's homily, it's a new day, a new day not just for Hoboken, but for the Roman Catholic Church. And it's a prideful day. As the first gay council person, elected official here in Hoboken, I'm very cognizant of one fact, that I'm actually not the first. There have been others before me. But in the Father's words, they may not have felt comfortable. As a matter of fact, there's one who's no longer with us. And his message to me has always been, be who you are, because he wasn't able to be. So today is a groundbreaking day for Hoboken, and I'm very proud to be here and very proud to have been asked to speak. Growing up in the Roman Catholic Church, a belief in community was always instilled in me, a belief in faith in one another, a belief in God. The very definition of community is the church, the communion of saints, and it is our responsibility, everybody in this, in, this, in this beautiful church today and everybody not here, to love one another and continue on the message of love and togetherness. These very traits are the same ones that caused me to represent our community here in Hoboken on the city council. And in politics, sometimes it's easy to see the negative. It's easy to see only what's going wrong or in political disagreements, to forget that we are all made in the image and likeness of God. We share more in common, and never forget this, together as humans, as we do apart. I'm often reminded when I'm younger, reading the Bible in, in Catholic school, trying to learn how to tie my tie and stand up straight, um, but feeling warmed by the teachings of Jesus, uh, uniting, going into communities that were often thought of untouchable, unpopular, and associating with them the people that the establishment considered lesser than. I'm always, and we must all always, reflect on how goodness and togetherness, reaching out to those who are different, even though we may not always agree in the spirit of God's love, is what makes us a better church and a better community. What makes us different is exactly the gray area of where love matters most, where we have the most to offer one another as faithful and as neighbors. Pope Francis famously said to reporters about the LGBTQ community, who am I to judge? And immediately, watchers of the church argued both sides as to what that actually meant. But much like many things, it is up to us, the faithful, to internalize how God's inherent love and how our Holy Father's pastoral message brings us all together. In this community of Hoboken, in this world, and on this joyous day of pride, not just in Hoboken and Manhattan, but in our hearts, for the love we share for one another, for the love I share for this church, and for the love that I share with my partner, Alejandro, who's with us today. Thank you. May God bless this church and our entire community. Thank you, Michael. You forgot to put your tie on, Michael, for Mass. <laughs> Just some practical announcements. Uh, we're accepting donations of items, clothes, and books for our big flea market and used book sale in September. You can bring them to the choir room on weekends. 
any adult who needs communion or confirmation, or if you know someone who would like to become Catholic, ask them to see Father Phil or Angela. Please consider online banking for your weekly donations. The Father's Day names you submitted are printed in the bulletin. And Erin has the June 50 50 tickets. The raffle is Monday night at 7 30. They're a dollar each. You could be a lucky winner. Uh, just three thank yous. One is uh, during the homily, I asked Gary to light the candle. Gary Stavella has been our local coordinator and has really worked hard to build up the community here and also to interface with other communities. So I want to thank, let's hold our applause till the end. I want to thank Gary. Bernie Courtney, who's here, is a CBS sports engineer, and he set up a system now that we could live stream our masses and services on YouTube. So this is the third one that'll be on YouTube. So I want to thank Bernie for his volunteer service and dedication. And then I hope you'll take our bulletin. I wrote about LGBT today, but also there's a picture now, an historic picture, at the cathedral when Cardinal Tobin welcomed the LGBTQ community, and David Harvey was the coordinator of that. And so you see the small picture of the Cardinal and David. Truth be told, there were more people in the picture, and David cropped them out. So it's just, he is with the Cardinal. But if there is one person in New Jersey who's making a difference in the Catholic community, it is David Harvey. He has been working behind the scenes and with individuals so that churches who want to welcome LGBT get support and help. And I say when the history is written of how we have changed, David would be a pivotal figure. So I first of all, let's thank Gary, Bernie, and David. And uh, since, since, I don't want David to forget, so David, come forward, there's a little gift for you, to thank you for everything you do to make our church more inclusive and more welcoming. And now for anyone who wants... For anyone who wants a special blessing for today's Pride March, if you would like to stand. If not, that's fine as well. God, we ask blessings upon those here who will march in today's parade, for all those who march, that their time and dedication awakens all of us to the beauty of life and LGBT pride. And pray that it's a safe parade, but that every step that they take is another step toward inclusivity and hospitality and welcome in our communities and in our churches. And now, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless them and all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. As we are sent forth, let us join together and sing the recessional hymn number 663, How Great Thou Art, number 663. See the stars. 